Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. Today we're in the F-14B Tomcat and we're looking at the mighty M61 Vulcan Cannon. It's a 20mm, 6 barrel hydraulically driven Gatling gun. It's mounted in the front fuselage, just left and down below the pilot's cockpit. It has a selectable rate of fire. On the gun rate on the ACM panel, we can have low for 4,000 rounds per minute or high for 6,000 rounds per minute. Generally, high is used for air-to-air -air mode and low is used for air-to-ground mode because it has a real kick of recoil to it. We go to the armament screen. We can see that we can change the ammo. We've got the quantity of ammo in percent. It can carry 676 maximum rounds. High explosive incendiary, armor piercing incendiary, armor piercing and high explosive mix or training rounds. So we'll take high explosive incendiary today for air to air use. Request refueling. If we look around the cockpit, we can see the ammo counter here just behind the hook lever. We've got 670 rounds currently. We can change that if we need to manually with this knob. Also, we've got the elevation where we can change the manual gun sight. It's measured in mils as standard at 53 mils plus. The gun is not actually aligned with the bore sight of the aircraft. If we uh, go to this mode here, we can see this is the ADL, the aircraft datum line. The gun is aimed about three degrees above that, and that's to add natural lead for a dogfight. So have a quick look at controls today, just two controls. To fire the gun, we've got trigger, and to change firing modes, we've got cage slash seam button. There are two main modes we can use the gun in, manual, or RTGS, real-time gun sight, and the real-time gun sight can be used in locked or unlocked mode. To change between manual and RTGS, we use the cage seam button. Next, we'll jump in the air and find a target. In the air now, let's get set up. We're gonna get our master arm in the on position. We're gonna choose our gun, and sorry if I got to show that earlier. To select our gun, we've got weapon selector gun. We're gonna make sure we're in air to air mode. Vid for the display, which you already are. We're gonna press the gun select. You can see we know we've got the gun selected because we've got G for gun and 6 for 600 rounds. By default we're in the RTGS gun sight, so we're going to press the cage button to get to the manual sight. So this is the manual sight. All we have to aim with is this pipa, this depressible pipa, and we can change the depression of the pipa. With this guy down here, it starts a standard at 53 plus mils. This puts it 3 degrees above the ADL of the aircraft here. Uh, we could change it if we wanted to, I don't know why we would, and we're going to have a quick crack at it. With uh, this manual mode, I find it pretty useless. In fact, let me just show that uh, we can adjust the lead. So I'm changing that, and you can see the man's manual gun sight come down. Put it back to 53. Okay, we're going to catch this target up and have a pop at him. I'm going to go to gun rate high. Okay, we've caught up with the bad guy now. As you can see, we've got no kind of lead prediction at the moment. It's just fixed essentially to our bore sight, and then plus or minus whatever elevation we've selected. So all lead calculations have to be done by the pilot on the fly. Uh, another thing to note that um, 700 rounds sounds like a lot, but at 6,000 rounds per minute, that's only a few seconds, so we do have to be conservative. So I'm going to take a guess it is about, I don't know, 1,000 feet, 1,500. Have a quick pop it in there. No, too high. So what we've concluded from that is that the manual gun sight is pretty garbage and I'm not sure why you'd ever want to use it. See here that G6 now says G5 because we've already used 100 rounds, believe it or not. That's how careful you have to be. Next, we're going to go to the uh, RTGS mode, so we're going to press cage again. Right, so this is in two modes, locked and unlocked. Locked is with a single target track STT radar lock, so we're going to do it without a radar lock first. We've got no real guidance, but what we do have is some basic inertial compensation. And what I mean by that is what's going to happen here is the diamond here and the crosshair are going to move about the screen and they are going to show where the bullets will be in 1,000 feet for the diamond and 2,000 feet for the cross. So if we couldn't get a radar lock or we didn't want to for some reason, that's how we would do it. So I'm going to guess he's, uh, you know, I've got no way of ranging him really without the radar, so I'm going to have to have a bit of a guess. So I reckon he's about 1,500 feet, so I'm going to put him between the diamond and the cross and we'll have a go with that. A little bit better. Hey, we actually got a hit. Okay, so that's RTGS, and you can see that it's going to compensate for a, 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 a lot of lead if we're putting a lot of pitch into the aircraft. And then we've got the RTGS in locked mode. So what we're going to do is just get a power lock on this guy. Power. See, the diamond 
now represents the target as you would see with the missile lock and the crosshair now shows where the bullets will be at the range that that guy is actually at so all we have to do essentially is maneuver this dot of the crosshair onto the, in the middle of the diamond and everything should be computed for us and it should be able to compute for any lead and whatnot and we should be able to hit him pretty easily so let's give that a go even i can't miss this one get on we got him right that's more like it pow 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 and we are closing a bit much you can see it's pretty accurate now i know it's not a very highly maneuvering target but it's pretty accurate. One thing you may, no may have noticed is that the diamond flashes when the bullets are in the air. And that's because when the bullets reach the predicted range of the aircraft, or the known range of the aircraft, then the diamond moves slightly to where those bullets actually are in terms of computation. Now, as long as the flashing diamond or the blinking diamond stays on the target, then everything's fine. It was a su successful solution. If the shot was wrong, then the diamond when flashing will move away from the target and that's where the bullets actually were when they were at the range of the target and so in that instance that's where the target should have been for the bullets to strike and that's it there's not really much else to show so let's go for a final run that is one tough tanker right i hope that helps and i'll see you later